Alan Skaggs with Empowered Inventing, where we try to help you help other people by taking your great innovation, the right opportunity, mixing that with sound wisdom, so you can turn them into real things like products and businesses. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm holding a pair of jeans. Well, I've got a question for you. Uh, do you know where modern jeans came from? I'll give you a hint. It was an invention. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you think about it, everything that you see that's man-made, pretty much somebody was just an idea in somebody's head at one time. So, uh, but, and, and jeans are no exception. Jeans are considered one of the most common pieces of clothing on earth, which I didn't know until I, I found out. And, uh, but how'd they come into existence? Of course, someone invented them. Uh, now, the word jeans has been around for a long time, since like the 1600s, and was defined as rough clothing by working men. So, uh, but the, what we know of is modern jeans, and there's a long more uh, uh, detailed story about this, about where they were made, and uh, the, 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 the place they were made, and the name, and how je the name jeans came, to, came about, but I'm not going to get into too deep in the weeds on that. But I do want to make some interesting points that we can learn some lessons from, because you know there's always some good lessons from this kind of stuff. So modern jeans were made, though, with rivets. You ever notice the rivets in jeans? Here's one in the pocket here. Let me get up real close so you can see it. Hopefully you can see the little rivet there. So there's like rivets in the pockets uh, in, in different places. Uh, so um, they're, they're strategically placed where they are subjected to the most strain and that's what gives them their longevity. Um, uh, it, it, kind of an interesting bonus fact uh, that I thought was particularly interesting. There used to be a rivet when they first came out with them uh, right here in the center, in the, in, in the crotch basically. Uh, because they found that was a strain point, but they found out that workers working around the campfire that would get very, very hot, and you know what would happen next, so uh, 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 they decided to drop the rivet there. Now, funny thing is, when I heard about that, I noticed all the, and this is an old pair of jeans, uh, uh, that they would always end up ripping when they finally ripped in that spot where that rivet used to be. So I always thought that was interesting. I don't know if you're, if yours, when yours, jeans get old if they if that's uh, a common thing or if it's just me but mine will always rip in that spot where they used to put the rivet uh, but uh, but I don't sit around a lot of campfires either so uh, anyway uh, so a, a man by the name of da Jacob Davis came up with the idea for these rivets uh, and uh, he uh, lived in the in Nevada in the 1800s 19th century probably I don't know, mid to late 1800s, I think. Somebody correct me on this. Uh, but uh, he, uh, he started hearing customer complaints about pockets tearing out uh, and had this inspiration from, of all things, a horse saddle that gave him the idea to reinforce those stress areas with the metal rivets. So demand immediately grew for Jacob Davis. And he knew that these jeans were, uh, he was on to something with these riveted jeans. And he wanted to patent it. Uh, he didn't have the $68, unfortunately. Now you gotta think, 19th century, $68, probably about $1,300 a day, but he still didn't have that. So he partnered with a gentleman named Levi Strauss. This is where the Levi Strauss name comes in. And in 1873, uh, uh, they patented it and they started mass production. And uh, uh, now the patent, I think they, somebody said expired in 1908. That doesn't sound like the 20 years, but back then maybe they had different links. I don't know. Uh, a, a good patent attorney can probably uh, uh, fill me in on that. But um, uh, but the uh, uh, but they 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 were just selling like gangbusters. You know, the rest is history. These aren't Levi's. These are actually Lee jeans. That's the little tag on the back. Uh, but uh, kind of an interesting thing about this, the Levi's has a stitch pattern that's trademarked. If you ever notice, now this isn't the Levi's stitch, stitch pattern, it's a different stitch pattern. Uh, it's uh, probably Lee has this trademark, but Levi actually trademarked this, uh, their particular pattern on the, uh, on the back pockets of the jeans. And uh, so it's, it's 
trademarked, uh, I'm, I'm guessing to this day. Uh, so that stitch pattern was trademarked to distinguish it from its competitors. You think about it. So 1873, they patented mass production, selling like gangbusters. 1908, sorry, we're out of luck. Well, it's been a long time since 1908, I think, and they're still selling jeans, and they're still selling a lot of Levi's. So uh, Levi's uh, stitch pattern was trademarked, and that's the thing that lasted. Uh, important point with that. So today, Levi Strauss is actually the number one fighter of trademark infringement, infringement cases, which I thought was very interesting. Uh, so what can we learn from all these things uh, uh, about genes? Uh, what one is, is that listening to customers is, is, a, is good product development. It's key to good product development, as a matter of fact. And uh, so you have to live, this is where a lot of inventors miss the boat. A lot of big companies also really miss the boat is when they lose touch and they don't understand and they are not figuring out, they're not really truly listening to their customers. Uh, Jacob Davis was listening to his customers. He heard these complaints and he went, hmm, what could I do to fix this? So uh, you have to to listen to your customers. Uh, your sales and your research and development should be closely tied together in your business or your invention process. Uh, uh, sometimes it helps uh, even if you invent where you live or work. So um, if you're a hairdresser, you might come up with the best idea because again, you're really close to the customers. You're really close and, and I, I uh, had an inventor that was a hairdresser and, and that, that's why I know that she, uh, she was always trying to come up with stuff that was outside of hairdressing and I said why don't you just stay where you live and, and find it where you live. Now sometimes there's exceptions to that case of course but, uh, but she really came up with a cool idea where she lived, where she worked, where, where she was, had intimate contact with customers and what was going on and where the real pain points were in the industry. So it really helps if you if your sales and your R and D and too many companies, especially the big companies. I mean, they just they're so far apart, they're so siloed. The one doesn't even know that the other one exists almost. So you 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 that could be your secret sauce in your small business or your invention process is is keep that R and D and that uh, uh, and that that sales customer contact really really close. Uh, another thing is working with people that have different skill sets than you, um, uh, and and they'll be different. They'll be different than you. They'll, sometimes that even causes a little friction. But work with people that have different skill sets than you. Uh, that will augment you in ways that you 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 couldn't dream. Uh, so uh, uh, Jacob Davis uh, partnered with Levi Strauss. Had they not have formed that uh, working relationship. And it doesn't always have to be a partnership. Sometimes you can be, you can just work closely with someone else who's a different business. Uh, um, sometimes uh, you can you can go into business together. Uh, uh, but you you, but it's important. Or sometimes you're just hiring them. They're they're on your team. But it's important to have people that have different skill sets. Uh, your trademark, and this was a really good point. I think the trademark was eventually more valuable for Levi's than the patent. I think the patent long gone. Over a hundred years ago, the patent expired. Are they, did they go out of business because their patent expired? No. They trademarked the back pocket and, and they differentiated themselves in the marketplace. This is important. A lot of people think, it, and again, I had another video just real, not very long ago about, about this, and that, you know, people are all fired. They're just, they're just, all consumed about how important the patent is. Well, the patent's one piece. There's a much broader thing with selling your product and, and helping other people and differentiating yourself in the marketplace. And, and trademarks, trademarks have an, a, an immense value uh, uh, with that. So, um, uh, so it was more valuable now than, than the patent ever. Patent's long gone. So uh, remember that and keep that in perspective. Uh, uh, with uh, with your inventing process. So if you're looking for more information about that sort of thing, 
of whether you've got the, the right idea, whether you're, uh, if you want to come out with the next jeans or the next uh, improvement to uh, the blue jeans, uh, uh, you can check out our Empowered Inventing Academy course, Do I Have the Next Million Dollar Idea? Uh, just go to empoweredinventing.com. That is a course that is uh, now live and readily available to uh, consume on demand. Uh, so just go to empoweredinventing.com and check that out. Again, I'm Don Skaggs. This is Empowered Inventing TV. Like, subscribe, help us to build our tribe. And I will look to see you at the next meeting, workshop, maybe one of our online courses, or on the next video.